Okay. May we have a moment of respite? Oh yeah, you're tired. Resting would be nice, don't you think? Yes, I do. Hey, are you writing about our last brawl? And what are you saying about me? Well, you were horrible. You shot lightning and just cursed. Rigongar, please say something heroic in battle at least once. I can't write down the stuff you say. And I can't lie that you were fighting in silence, now can I? Oh, I forgot to change the meal again. I gotta remember to change the meal to one of the ones that give us a, a travel bonus. As long as there's not were rats roaming the the hills near the were rat hill. Follow my lead. Leave it down, better ones. It wasn't just what did he write about our last fight. It's like, what did he write about me in our last fight? And she's like, you were horrible. I didn't get to write anything. Any last wishes? <laughs> so at least it was kind of directed to be like, why she might say. He was horrible. If he can throw lightning, I'd be far more impressed. Ooh, I can charge. Bye bye, Barty. <laughs> Didn't expect it to die. And it went a little bit too far. Oh, wrong person. Bring it. This is where I step. Uh, uh, oh, wow. She actually ended the fight. She's getting better. All according to plan. Okay, if a halfling's holding a great sword, isn't that just a bastard sword? Oh, well, we got a new bow for um, Octavia. The game had her equipped with a short bow. At least we got a new bow for her. No, wait. We can only exit down here. In due time. And mon monkey grip. Maybe. Okay, that's a good point. I didn't even think of the feats. I was just saying, like, for it, like. A half, like, like what, what's a great sword to a halfling? That's just like a bastard sword for anybody else. Right. All right, let's see what this place has. As it should be. Down in the ravine. A way out. Really? That's it. Something bothering you? Hmm. 
I was about to say, nope. There's a giant water hydra, which is like basically kind of thing going on here. Um, I only got 84 hit points. In due time. We did handle the troll. Action economy will totally save our butts in this, right? What troubles you? Oh wait, no. Uh, you. Share your troubles. I yearn for entertainment. You gotta go? Oh, man. Well, thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed it. Wait, did you fall and it not pop up a warning or is I'm j just missing? There it is. Now the bot throws it out. Okay. I was like, I'm pretty sure he hasn't. I would have remembered. Thank you so much for the fall. I'm glad you stream enjoyed the stream. Uh, today's what? Saturday? God, my tastes are so mixed up. Uh, I'll be streaming this again tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Time. So basically the entire time I've been streaming so far. So if you want to check it out some more, make sure you check it out. Hope to see you there. All right. You're but a George! I hope this isn't too stupid of me. Got an AC of 20. That troll didn't have an AC of 20. Serves you right. Let's try this way. Can't attack this turn, but I'm in position. Valerie. The bush stopped Valerie from getting into position. Alright. Pulls up to be in healing range. You deserved it. Ooh. Just reduced damage. Probably the fire got reduced, right? No, the piercing got reduced. Any last wishes? It's got five damage reduction. This should do it. Six and zero. Ooh, sixteen. Ouch. I'll cut you. Die for me. Eleven. Okay. That's already like twenty percent of its health, almost right. We go 13. Now we're talking. It's almost a half. Do not falter. Valerie misses. Ooh, good heal. This is where I step in. Miss. My turn. A calculated risk. Seven and nothing. Crit miss my second attack. The weak suffer. Ooh. I endure. Okay. Um. Bleed for me. Fear me. He missed. He's going to step out though because he's shitting his pants. They go down. Thirteen. Good. Is, is Pathfinder good, game good? I'm enjoying it. If you like this kind of like RP, like CRPGs, yeah. Onward. It's got so much to character creation. Like, besides the usual attributes, like here's the special abilities, my martial abilities. 
here's the class progression for just a fighter all the way up to level 20. I can multi-class. Of course, spell books, this character doesn't have any, but it's like, it's involved. It's everything you can do in 3.5e. Well, everything you can do in Pathfinder, right? So. Stay behind me. Okay, we're going to do another cure moderate wounds on Reggie. He almost died. There's been a lot so far. And I haven't even gotten to the part of the game that it opens up. It's a big game. Serves you right. First off, how about the fact that it goes up to level 20? It goes all the way to level 20 with all the classes and subclasses. And uh, it's got even like prestige classes. And I, I've only seen like a quarter of the map and it's quite a lot. We haven't even accessed the kingdom making side of things, which is coming up. All right, if I can get some good good sneak attacks, it might this drop. I didn't. Ooh, 19 damage to me. I don't like that. I'll cut you. Die for me. Oh no. I was hoping you could take a swing and step back out. Let us strike as one. Heal everybody. Alright. You deserved it. Missed. She only hits on a 13 though. Alright. Come on, clutch. Let's try this way. Three and zero. Damn it. It's got damage reduction of five. Yes, Reggie! I like the way that disappeared, but I like the way the elementals disappeared from Pathfinder or from the last a bit more. Just because kind of like the the fighting and like, like the rickety like as they shrank in on themselves is really cool. Adventures call to them. Alright. How may I help? I wrote it like I saw it. Yes, yes. Let's get some healing. I'm listening. All right, one Just more for clutch, I guess. Yes. He's down eleven. That will do. All according to plan. That water elemental was something else. Follow my lead. Is this a cave? It looks like a cave, but it's not, apparently. All right. So here, I'll show you the map and I'll let you judge how much content you might think. Keep in mind, I've already played what, like, four hours plus five or plus 12 hours plus. So we've done about 20 hours or so. This is the world we've been in so far. We started up in another country, came down here. We explored e these areas. Oh, no, 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 no. Not damn yet. Wait for it. That's this little piece right here. This is all you've seen so far. The map goes all the way over. Down. Do, 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 do. Huge map. This just happens to be where my kingdom's going to be. <laughs> if you're interested. It's pretty awesome so far. 
three hours to travel back this far. Check it out. We haven't followed this road yet, so we can explore the road this way. We found a kingdom resource. Can't get it yet because we're not in our kingdom yet. May we have a moment of respite? No, we're going to need to rest again. Yep. All right. Now, one thing to keep in mind. Listen, Tristan. Why do you always forgive everyone for everything? Punch him once, and they respect you right away. I don't need that kind of respect, Amiri. It brings nothing but suppressed anger. Sooner or later, they'll understand they were wrong and apologize for their carelessness and rash words. Oh, the heavy meal worked. Nice. Yeah, uh, the, we were given a quest to come and secure the stolen lands from the stag lord. Um, that's his fort down here. We've done that. Now we can go back, report that we've completed our quest. We're going to be turned into a baron. Once we have our barony, we can start ruling this as the lord of the area. If that's what you want to do, you could. What? Is that really the best use of our time? All right. How many days do we have left before we have to return our quest? I think we have enough to go hand it in now. We've been everywhere we can kind of go right now anyway. We have 40 days to, to hand in this quest or we'll fail. That's one thing. Keep in mind the time, time factor. Like if you're a lord that's off doing quests, there could be all kinds of kingdom stuff that you might miss out on because you failed to get back in time. So you kind of have to be like very on your guard with time. That's like the people's one, the biggest complaint I've seen so far is people get upset that they can't do all the quests. It's like, well, you're off traveling. You spent 16 days in the wilderness. How did you, how do you think you're going to go save the person that was dying over this way when he went off this way first, you know, like stuff like that. So I think it's most people being too babied by modern gaming. But I'm used to, I've played a lot of old games where it's like time was a factor where it'll kick your butt if you're not careful. So, it seems to make sense to me, that's all. Beans, the horseshoe, and scales. Shiny shells is just to be sold. Wolf pelt. Some like crazy big wolf pelts too, if you ask me. But whatever. Gold trinket. Green port. Right, we have what? We have pure moderate wounds, ear piercing scream, grease, magic missile, magic missile. And we got some agates. that was only clicking on portraits and action icons I thought it was like that oh no yeah I, I get I can see why you'd be curious I'm impressed with how much is to this game too like I, it's more going on than I was expecting some coal some jade Cheap pearls. Bucket mirror. All right. Light crossbow. Long spear plus one. Scimitar plus one. I did switch them over to great sword, so might as well sell the plus one scimitar. Did you get any more scrolls of cure moderate? Doesn't look like he did. 
That really sucks. So all he has now is potions of cure moderate wound. They're like twice as expensive. Okay, uh, I guess I'll buy, I don't know, 15. Now the small heels. My game is bugged. I can't claim any resources in my territories. Have you got your, like, have you been back to the place and gotten yourself so that you're actually uh, in your territory, like an actual kingdom? Pathfinder Adventures. I think I know the game you're talking about. I didn't. I tried to get into it. I, I just found it boring. All right. Rest off awaits. I plan to set off right away. The fog seems to be thinning, but we should wait until it burns off completely. In the meantime, I'll gather some supplies and for the journey and make sure you can enjoy your trip. To rest off. Why? Oh, thank you, Oleg. Because, like, my understanding with the kingdom thing is until you have the kingdom, you can't get it. But then you have to travel back to all those spots with the resources to get the resources. Good work. Nice to see I haven't lost my intuition for people. Not many would have managed to set out to the Stolen Lands and return with the Stag Lord's head. But I knew you could handle it. You knew I could handle it and that you could trust me. And yet you still weren't sure if it was me or the other guy that was the, the spy. Your words are false, my lady. I see your lies for what they are. I'll still take the barony, though. Congratulations are in order. Today, you'll receive the title of Baron before the High Society of Restov. And even Natala Sertova personally. God's bless her. Tomorrow, you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands if you wish. But this time, as a ruler. But matters of state can wait. For now, enjoy this feast in your honor. All the city leaders are here. It's a great opportunity to make some useful connections. Speaking of connections, let me introduce you to Kassil Eldori. He's my adopted son and apprentice. He's a trustworthy man. I'd like to send him with you as an envoy. <laughs> outside is outside, whether an inch or a mile. That sucks, though. All right. She's sending her son to look after me, eh? Jaseel, a young half-orc with impeccable poise, performs a textbook perfect bow. Yamandi, just what kind of game are you playing? I think I have the right to know. You already know about my encounter with Tartuccio? Of course. Keston gave me a full report. You dealt with the scoundrel perfectly. It would be naive to think that none of your neighbors will try to stick their hands in your affairs. <laughs> Especially that sly fox, Irovetti. Irovetti is the king of Paraxi, I think. If Steam refunded, refund one of my VR games to buy a whole package. Ooh, nice. There's not many VR games that I'm excited to play. So many VR games kind of look, well, like shit. Beat Saber looks like it's a lot of fun. Half-Life Alex looks like something I want to play so bad. And that's about it. Boneworks looked like it was kind of cool, but not quite there yet. I'm unstable like Rogue with orders not to steal. Yeah, Boneworks. Like I said, Boneworks is like, it looks like one of the better ones. But I've heard it's not as fun to play as the others. What's H3 VR? I've not heard of that one. Keep in mind, I don't have VR, so I won't know a lot of these special names, but H3 VR might be a cool one. Yes. Yes, you certainly have that right. But tell me, how well do you know Brevoy's history or the current political atmosphere? It won't be an easy explanation. What role do I play in your game? What do I need to know about the history of Bravoy? 
What's now called Brevoy was originally two different countries, Rostland and Isia. Two hundred years ago, they were stuck in constant squabbles. Then, Coral the Conqueror showed up and united the two states into one. Such diplomatic tricks are easy to manage when you have dragons at your disposal. The so-called noble houses of Brevoy, mainly Sertova, Orlovsky, and Lebeda, once ruled over Isia. We, the Aldori, ruled Rostland. The royal house Rogarvia, founded by Coral the Conqueror, forced us into obedience. But 200 years isn't long enough to make peace with such a troubled history. Even 2,000 years wouldn't be enough for us to accept Issian rule. Brevoy is a country held together by a thread, and that thread grows ever weaker. Maybe you should accept the fact that it's no longer Issian rule and Issia fell just like... What was your place called? Rostlin? Rostlin and Issia fell. They don't exist anymore. We're all Brevoy. Just accept it as that. It makes it a lot easier to swallow the fact that Issia is leading things. Blade and Sorcery. Gorn's supposed to be a pretty good, but it also doesn't look like there's a lot going on in it. Hot dog, horseshoes, and hand grenades. That doesn't... Doesn't sound like it'd be that interesting, but it, without having played the game, it's hard to say. What do I need to know about the political atmosphere? We... The Aldori and the great noble houses spent 200 years under the rule of invaders, the royal house Rogarvia. We plotted, we schemed, we stabbed each other in the back, but open confrontation was out of the question. But a few years ago, house Rogarvia disappeared. No one knows how or why, but one day their manners were just empty. And the force that held Brevoy together, that kept us from a bloody feud, ceased to be but it showed you that you guys could live in peace don't you see see i went to it's supposed to it was supposed to start on the 20th yesterday i went to install the open beta and it's like it's not allowed to be installed yet according to the battle net i wanted to check it out i was going to do it for yesterday's stream instead of ender lilies but it wouldn't let me install it it was going to make me pre-purchase, do the pre-order. And I'm not 100% sure I want to pre-order it yet. Because after all, I have Diablo 2. I can play Diablo 2. As amazing as it is, I didn't like what they did with the Diablo 1 special event for Diablo 3. They should have gave you the entire Diablo 1 as like a side story in Diablo 3 graphic style. Rather than fake it and restrict things and then make it smaller. Brevoy is currently ruled by the House Sertova, the former kings of Issia. But their power pales in comparison to that of House Rogarvia when they were here. So now Sertova and Aldori stand facing each other, staring each other in the eye, waiting for the other to draw their sword. It's an untenable situation. No one wants a civil war that would drown Brevoy in blood. But peace between us is also out of the question. It seems like you're the bad guys in this, though. You just refuse to accept that things have changed, and 200 years is a long time to hold a grudge. What role do I play in your play? In? Rustland wants to regain its independence, and we will regain it. The power the Issians hold over us is humiliating and costly. And the Sertovas won't give us our freedom without a fight. That is, unless there is some external power that can force everyone to sit down and talk. Do you see where this is going? You think you, I can... An upstarted baron can get enough power to force established houses to be like, sit down and play nice? I don't think so. Yes and no, though. Like, 
you're not actively trying to sabotage them to get them out of your country or anything. It's more like a peaceful, yeah, you're bastards. You know, like, it's not like, okay, we're going to start this new country, they're going to go around, and then you're going to force them to make us rulers, okay? Now go do that. Like, that's a bit extreme. They're, they're going to, they're pushing things towards the war here. The stolen lands are disputed territory. Brevoy can't appropriate them without raising protests from each of the neighboring states. However, if some brave people were to found independent states on that land, it would be another matter entirely. My hope is that you and your future neighbors, Baron Hannes Drelev and Captain Mager Varn, will become our allies. But even your neutrality would introduce a powerful counterbalance to the aggression of the noble houses. Maybe, with your help, the inevitable division of Brevoy can occur without too much pain. And what does Restlov play? Restov is a free city, proud of its independence from everyone, including the Aldori Swordlords. But when it comes to Rostland's liberation, our goals align. This whole plan is our joint creation with Lord Mayor Yosef Selimius. If Natalia's already here, why did she let you grant me the title? Actually, she could still intervene and disrupt the proceedings, but she's a Sertova. Their games are always complex and multi-layered. They're always looking for ways to turn defeat into victory. If she's decided to allow you to become a Baron, it means she already has some idea of how she can turn it to her benefit. Let's consider how she could do so. Alright, understandable. You have a good day, my friend. Thank you so much for the cheer. Maybe she understands that Rostland will inevitably separate and she doesn't want a war. In that case, new states in the Stolen Lands give the Issians a reason to sit down and talk without losing face. But that's an optimistic view, and truth be told, it doesn't quite match up with what we've come to expect from the Sertovas. The more likely scenario is that Natala wants to win you over to her side. If war breaks out and at least one of you stabs us in the back, Rostland will be surrounded by enemies. That might be enough to bring about our downfall. But you would fall first, and your newly formed states would be left in ruin. The Issians always like to have someone around to pull their chestnuts out of the fire for them. A piece of friendly advice? Don't do business with House Sertovas, no matter what promises they make you. Any deal with the noble houses is a deal with devils. Seems like we're dealing with one right now. How should I know? We're in the middle of a big game. And today, you move from being merely a piece on the board we really are. to being one of the players. I was already the player, sorry. I hope you have a better understanding of what's at stake. I'm going to speak with the guest. Enjoy your evening. When you're ready for the official part, come to me. All right. Well, we got her adopted son as an envoy. A noble welcome. The hero deserves a reward for his feast. Uh, Baron's title. Mingle with the guest. All right. Before we do that, I'm out of water, so I'm going to take a quick break to go get some water. Hey, we leveled up. Sweet. Uh, to go to go do that real quick. Let's. And then uh, we'll definitely continue. It's only what six six thirty. We still got like five and a half hours of the stream left, guys. We got lots of coming up to do. All right, here we go. Please. All right, let's throw on some music and I'll be right back.
All right, everybody. Sorry that took so long. I had to replace the water in the cooler. And of course, I meant a tri trip out to the car because I hadn't brought in the other water bottle. Now, where were we? I believe we were about to enjoy a feast. Pause the music. The beautiful music from Ender Lilies, that's what you guys are listening to. And since we're at a feast, I grab myself a pepperette. So good. Lander. Lander, a handsome, well dressed young man of about 17 years old, looked at you with a polite smile. So you're the famous slayer of the Stag Lord's gang. Soon to be a baron. Pleased to make your acquaintance. My name is Alanda. No last name, no title. Well, let's just say I'm here incognito. Under my circumstance, it's wise to keep one lineage to oneself. Truth be told, that's precisely what I wanted to speak to you about. You see, I am an heir to one of the Bravois noble houses. I won't say which, but believe me, a newly appointed baron from no connection or with no connections would do well to have a friend like me. I don't know if I can trust you. You won't even tell me who you are. I travel the country in secret, without servants, so I can see it for myself. Not from a carriage window, but face to face with the people. My family would never approve, of course, but then I never asked. I need to know, Bravoy, if I'm going to rule a part of it someday. I know Yamandi wants to impose her stepson on you as an emissary of Bravoy. Refuse. Take me instead. Don't look at my age. While they are, while they may have trained this half-orc to swing a sword, I've been trained to rule since I was a child. I'll be of far greater use to you, both now and in the future, after I have a firm position in my family. Are you from Restovic nobility? Please tell me again what you're doing here. Tell me once more what you want from me. Are you from the nobility? Oh no, I'm not from here. I'm just visiting, you could say. I wanted to see for myself the heroes who managed to conquer the Frontierlands. And the Lord Mayor was kind enough to invite me to this wonderful party. Hmm. I'm not sure we can trust this guy. I'll consider. 
Yes, do so. Think carefully. Commence the official... A high society reception is always an excellent entertainment. You can drink plenty of expensive wine and stuff you yourself stuff yourself with tiny sandwiches on sticks. Or you can skip the time wasted on gluttony and make a few useful connections. Who is this mysterious young man named Lander? A feast in times of pestilence. A ludicrous attempt to sink into reverie. Uh, Hannes Dredlov? In due time. Miri's over there. Who's Hannes Drelev? The man's gorgeous clothes hide rippling muscles beneath them. He looks past your ear, obviously bored. Baron Hannes Dredlov, he says offhandedly, emphasizing the word Baron. And you must be the Stag Lord Butcher. I'm sorry. I quite forgot your name, but you look. But you took out the stag lord and his gang, and so Sword Lord Yamandi is granting you permission to take the, his place, right? Well, congratulations. My lands lie to the west of yours, I suppose. We're neighbors now. Yeah, I defeated the stag lord. Pray tell, what did you do to deserve your new domain? You're not very polite for a neighbor. <laughs> or, sorry, for a noble. Hmm. A smirk appears on the Baron's face. I don't need to deserve or prove anything. Countless generations of my glorious ancestors have done so for me. If I had a slightly bigger army, Sword Lord Yamandi would have simply given all the stone lands to me. Alas, I don't have so many soldiers at my disposal, so she had to urgently make barons <laughs> for the likes of you and Varn. So you have no army and no special merits. You were just given land for being pretty. Under other circumstances, I'd have you whipped for such words, but let's not ruin Lady Aldori's celebration, hmm? If you want so badly to measure merits, we can do so another time. You're not very polite for a nobleman. Ah, politeness must be deserved. Baron, you're talking to a baron. Get your head out of your ass. Otherwise, I'll shove my foot up there and see if I can find it. Not even be... Not even deigning to reply, Baron turns and leaves. Alright, looks away. He's a dude. He's a dude we do not have to deal with on nice terms. Haha, <laughs> to victory, to freedom. Buttons up, bottoms up. Yes. Mmm. Try the eclairs, they're delicious. You got guard. Svanky Keeg. Ezvonki Keeg, a handsome man with a weather-beaten face, grasps your hand tightly in his rough cow's palms. Unlike the rest of the guests in the festive clothes, he wears a simple robe. The only luxury you see on him is a holy symbol of a made of solid gold. The other guests look at him with respect, some bordering on awe. Congratulations on your victory, he says in a deep voice. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Ezvonki Keeg, high priest of Irsel and rest of... Ooh, Diplomacy 18. Bringing law into the Stolen Lands is a difficult endeavor. I would be grateful for any help you could spare. Success! This is truly noble and a tanky. I believe our community will be able to provide you with reasonable assistance. We'll help you construct a shrine in your capital, free of charge. Holy shit. Free shrine. That's actually pretty good. Do many people in Restov venerate Erastil? There are, they revere many gods in Restov. They pray to Abadar, patron of cities, and Orasma, gatherer of souls. There are also some more rare cults, but there's no denying that the stag god has the largest congregation here. And no wonder. People here have lived off farming and hunting for centuries. You're dressed surprisingly simply for a festive occasion. The corners of the priest's mouth turn up in a faint smile. The nobles dress in silks and satins to stand out from the poor. The priest wears a simple robe to stand out from the nobles. I like this guy. It was an honor to meet you, my friend. 
The rest will keep you. Huh. Wasn't expecting someone I'd actually like. Look at that. There's a Valerie. Truth be told, I'm not really comfortable here. I lost my taste for high society. Tristian. Ooh, Estin Garris and Magar Varn. And Lindsay. Oh, Magar Varn's the other one that got leveled up or sent up with us, right? That is not far. All right, let's talk to... Hey, look. Jathal's back. They call this a feast? I'd show them some real festivities if they'd let me. Yeah, she's she's a vampire, isn't she? Or is she just straight up undead? Magar Varn. This man is obviously more comfortable on the battlefield than in the company of nobles. He's well built, but the expensive waistcoat he's wearing doesn't quite fit properly, as though it was borrowed. He has a few pale scars across his face, and his dark hair is drawn into an unkempt ponytail with a few streaks of gray running through it. He greets you with a broad smile and a firm handshake. Let me introduce myself, Magar Varn, the new ruler of Dunsward, your neighbor to the east. Like you, I'm about to be a baron. Great job with the Stagler, by the way. Not everyone could ex exterminate a whole gang of bandits with such a small team. She's just an undead elf. Okay. I wasn't sure if she was vampire or, or undead. I, I, I remembered the undead part, but I wasn't sure if it was like specific type of undead. Undead elf kind of seems like an anti-elf, if you ask me. But then again, those kind of exist in D&D &D and Pathfinder as drow. Or dark elves. How do you, do you earn your title? How do you feel being a noble? Looking at his rich clothes, Vern smirks. Like a pheasant on a plate. I've killed all kinds of monsters, but this is the first time I've strongly felt like turning away to get me eaten. You know, it's the word an uh, arrogant man in the other corner of the room. See that lad? Baron Drevlov. He's not like us. Who knows what generation of Baron he is? Didn't cover... Didn't even shake my hand. You and me? We're like dirt beneath his boots. That's why those like us, the new, newly made nobility, need to stick together. Otherwise, you take my land and yours in the blink of an eye. How did you earn your title? Truth be told, my team and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Yamandi Eldori needed someone reliable to take and hold the territory. The captain of the mercenary team, if that wasn't clear. Varling's host. Have you heard of us? No, nah, no matter. We've done work for Yamandi before. This time, the task was simple. We just waltzed into the area, cleared it of the most brazen monsters, and built a small fort to hold the place. And for that, a barony and land to own. It was a dream job. It was nice meeting you. Farewell. Goodbye. Once you send a land, come pay us a visit. I will. Keston Garris. Oh, that's the guy we, uh... That told us to go after... What's his name? Tartuccio. Well, Tartuccio. <laughs> well, scum. And how did we... Um, maybe... Maybe I've had one too many. He's, he's drunk. Oh, something's happening. Will you drink with me? Ooh, here she is. Hey, easy. Finally. Darling, you met during the Battle of Yamandi at Dory's Mansion. As she draws near, she places one of the cups of wine she's holding into your hand. Hmm. Of course, to beauty. To beauty. It sweetens our happy days and brings solace to our dark and sorrowful ones. But jokes aside, I came to apologize. I know the words I said in our conversation with Lady Aldery might have offended you, but this was not my intention. The lessons life has dealt me were not easy. I've learned to be wary of new acquaintances, which is why I've refused to join your party. I hope you will forgive me for this weakness and for my harsh words. And I hope you will hear me out, for I have something to tell you. No need to apologize. I didn't. I don't expect everyone I meet to immediately fall under my charms. And trust me with all their secrets. 
Apologies accepted. What did you want to tell me? First, I will listen to what you have to say and then I'll decide. You've shown your duplicity once. I don't have to have anything further to do with you. Hmm. I'm thinking one. She wasn't really that, like... Her words were more measured. She, she, her basically, what she said was basically, I don't know if I can trust either of you yet. So she went off on her own. How amusing. Usually those who don't seek affection are the very ones who receive it. Anyway, enough sweet talk. There is something important I wanted to tell you. As it happens, I came across some very valuable information. What brave conqueror of these wild lands wouldn't be intrigued by news of an ancient shrine, possibly full of great treasures? A place such as this was discovered by my old friends from Kadira, and it just so happens to be located in the lands that today become rightfully yours. My friends lack the courage to enter the shrine and seek the treasure, but what will stop us? We who know the taste of battle, and have been singed by the same fire. What would be better than a treasure hunt? I'm ready. I'm sure you'd like to finally gain your official title and celebrate your victory. And I don't like noisy parties and ceremonies. Find me when you return to your dominion. I'll rent a house in your capital. We can discuss the details of our expedition there. So long, friend. I'll call you so today, because soon enough, all you'll be hearing is... Your grace. Your grace. Your grace. Saluting you with the cup, the tiefling girl steps back and disappears into the shadows between the columns. All right. Sorrow, uh, sorrow flow? Fun Casey in the capital. The title of that quest gives me pause. <laughs> Apologies for eating while I stream, but oh god, those are such good pepperettes. Chandra Merve. As it right. should be. These people are not just celebrating. It seems your feast has given them new hope. Or up to the brim so that, so that, oh, I must be drunk. I forgot the line. Idol of Baron sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. I'm not going to, the, the your grace part I could do without, but the, the Baron. I could do with, I, I don't think I'd complain too much about being a Baron in this kind of society. So Tova's the one we were told to be wary of. Let's find out what Chandra and Merve has to say. Ah, yes, I see. Good old Ressoff hasn't changed a bit. Even the smell in the streets is the same. Natalia Sertova. Uh, Natalia Sertova is discussing something with an unfamiliar old lady in a low voice. Upon noticing you, she breaks into a sugary sweet smile. You are not only tough, but quick. Well, congratulations on your victory. Enjoy it while you can. What do you think awaits me? Nothing good, I fear. The Eldori, our dearest friends, didn't deem it necessary to inform you of their plans, I assume. You see, they're preparing to separate from Brevoy. A Brevoy. It will not be a peaceful process. They lack the strength currently, hence using the this legal loophole to create some independent allies. Once the civil war breaks out, your lands will be the first to endure a, a strike from Brevoy's forces. Perhaps they'll erect the memorial stone independent an independent rest stuff to honor you. Well, I wouldn't count on even that, really. What would you propose? In your situation, the most reasonable course of action would be to align yourself with the lawful rulers of a boy. The houses... The noble houses. The Eldori won't dare to rebel, knowing they will immediately become entrapped. You could help Bravoy aid a civil... Avoid a civil war while simultaneously enjoying some well-deserved peace in your lands. I believe Yamandi has already attempted to impose a guard on you as an emissary. I'm guessing her low-born stepson, the green-skinned boy, Kassil. It's up to you, of course, but I would recommend you a different envoy. Please meet Chandra Merve, an experienced diplomat who seems familiar with Bravoy's politics. 
who is more familiar with Ravoy's politics than any brawler could. Okay, so... This is almost exactly what Yolandi, uh, Yamandi told us to expect. She's like, they're going to want to put their own people in and say that this is going to happen. They're both saying the other person's going to, to attack and immediately try to take us out. Mm. A little bit of pop when I opened it on my hand. All right. The old woman sitting next to Natalia gives you a slight bow. I would be happy to help you establish diplomatic relations with Ravoy. I'll consider your proposal. Think on it. Do not make any hasty decisions. So we have a choice of relations with either of the potential warring factions and a third and a, one choice as a third party. I'm tempted to go with Lander, just because he's a third party. The only thing is, he won't say where he's from. All according to plan. Hands okay. Tell me again what you're doing here. I travel the country in secret without servants, so I can be see it for myself. Not from carriage window, but face to face. I know Yamadi wants to impose her steps on you as emissary. Uh, Brevoy, refuse. Take me instead. Don't look at my age. While they may be, have trained this half-orc to swing a sword, I've been training to rule since I was a child. I'll be of far greater use to you, both now and in the future, after I have a firm position in my family. Hmm, what do you guys think? One for the... Yo, Mandy, one for the green, the orc, one for the woman, or three for, for Lander? If you guys want to throw your own choices in. That's just a guest. Guest, 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 guest. Casil Eldori, Yosef Salamius. Oh, that's the mayor. I know, the, honestly, the only reason I'm even considering Lander is because then we don't have a direct tie to either side of the war, and then we could be a neutral party. You didn't get the chance of Lander? I wonder why not. I apologize. I'm going to take one second to go wash my hands. It seems like when the pop opened up and the little spritz that came out, my hand feels sticky and I don't want to leave it like that. So I'll be right back real quick. I apologize. There we go. So much better. It's odd how what just like a few choices, like a few drops of pop. Like, probably not even like a. It's probably not even a milliliter. 
I think it was literally like two drops. One on my hand and one on the, the bottle. But I was making my hand all sticky. The orc sounded like he won't contribute shit, so I ditched him. <laughs> I think that's funny. You're like, not the orc. The other guy's like, go with the orc. <laughs> An older man with full sideburns looks at you with interest through a golden eyeglass. Where now? If it isn't the hero of the festivities, the, pro the protege of Adir Yamandi. He pulled this off quite cleverly. I confess, I wasn't convinced your enterprise would succeed. I even bet a bottle of my best Pitexian wine against you, but I'm happy to admit I was wrong. The Aldori have always been adept at finding new talent. I don't believe we've been introduced. How are things in rest- uh, No, I want- We haven't been introduced yet. Who are you? So it would seem I am Joseph Salemius, Lord Mayor of Restov. I rule this town and the adjacent lands, and as the- Your norm of the neighbor, I hope we can look toward- Forward to a long and fruitful friendship. Ah, so you rule Restov. And what about the Eldori? How are things in- Let's- Let's get up to that. Let's go- How are things in Restov? I don't want to boast, but things have been going well in recent years. Trade prospers, the population grows, the citizens are happy. Although recently, especially after the disappearance of House Rogarvia, more and more troublemakers have been appearing, and people talking about the most shocking things, but those sorts of rumors aren't worthy of your attention. Odd, those are the exact kind of rumors that I'm like, I want to hear about. It's like, uh, can you tell me about those rumors again? Oh, it's nice to be able to touch the bop without getting my hands all sticky. I'm glad I washed it. All right. But these sorts of rumors here. So you rule Rustov, and what about the Eldori? Ah, Bravois' politics seem complex and incomprehensible to many. Here, in this part of Rostland, the spirit of the Northern Freedom still lives. We are loyal to the throne, of course. May the gods prolong the life of His Highness. But here, far from the dominions of the Great Houses, we have our own way of life. It is especially important now, after the certain events that I probably don't need to name. The Adori Sword Lords used to rule Rustland. They're still the largest lowlanders and main... or largest landowners and main military force in the region. But it's not for nothing that Rustov is called a free city. We're proud to choose the Lord Mayor from among the citizens, considered not by their lineage, but by their merit. Alright, now that's, yeah, that's important to know. What kind of events? Mayor Salemius gives you a patronizing smile. Why? An aspiring politi politi um, politician needs to be well informed. I'm talking, of course, about the disappearance of the ruling house Ru Rugarvia. I thought that might be what it is. In case there was something else going on, I, ha I had to ask. Can you imagine it? Old man Coral conquered our land two centuries ago. It'd be a shameless lie to say that nobody wished his royal house could just disappear into thin air. But once that exact thing happened, it turned out nobody was ready. Poof! All over the country, every member of the royal house disappeared without a trace. Nobody knows what happened. It's a mystery, but a mystery pregnant with opportunity for everyone. It was nice meeting you. Good day. Please wait a moment. Your young barony will need resources to establish itself. And for what I've been told, you're somewhat in need of financial assistance. I could organize and resupply and supply everything you need for the construction and spread out cost on an extremely favorable term. I could immediately procure, let's say, 500 cartloads of building supplies. I'm sure that would give you a good start. In exchange, I'd ask a small favor. Until you repay the debt in full, you simply assume the obligation of contracting building services through Restov's building guild. Do we have a deal? Yeah. I'd be, I would be happy to accept your offer, or thank you for the offer, but I can't. Now, I'd be happy for 500 free building supplies up front, and then you're... Restov is our primary contractor. Hmm. Unless they're going to then, like, the first 500 is free, but then they're, like, 50% higher price than any other person, right? I don't know. I don't think he's going to be that corrupt, because that would alienate us too much. But even if it's only, like, 1% to 5% more, it'd be, like, over time really cost a lot to get out from. But you know what? Yeah, I'll accept 500 free. Then it's a deal. I'll get everything in order right away. Schedule the delivery immediately. 
Nice meeting you. The feeling's mutual, I assure you. I look forward to hearing more of your dazzling success soon. All right, free shit so far. All right, Castle Eldori. Today's a historic day for rest of, and maybe for all of Bravoy. If we take him, that's pretty much stating to everybody that we're in the Sword Lord's pocket. If we take her, it's saying that we're against the Sword Lords, despite them raising us to our station. And if we take him, who knows what we're courting? Because we have no... I like the idea of a noble that goes around... The fact that he goes around completely incognito, acting as just a regular person through the world, I kind of I kind of dig that. He doesn't have that high and mightiness about him. Or at least he only has hints of it. The fact that he thinks it's so amazing that he would even do that is a little bit of it, but. Oh man, this is going to be a hard choice. A one, a two, and a three. Kind of wish there was like more choices, but I think it's time we talk to Yamandi. We've talked to everybody here. It's half the guests are our party. And then guards. <laughs> All right. Uh. Coming a baron. All right. So, how do you like our little gathering? I hope you've made some useful connections. Shall we move on to the official proceedings? Before we begin, I'd like to talk about the envoy I'll be taking with me. My apprentice, Cassil Aldori, will go with you, won't he? So that apparently the options are actually reversed. <laughs> In game, three is the orc, two is the lady, and one is Lander. Hmm. I wish they gave you a chance to actually talk to, like, talk to the envoys directly besides Lander. What's the point of having her envoy? Well, either way, you get an envoy with this. Bringing her envoy kind of already aligns us into on her side. It gives us a person to help run the kingdom and connections through the sword lords through through her envoy, the the house lord like the noble houses through Chandra Merve, and for young Lander it's through another some noble guy. Kill them. He got resurrected after the fact, but we don't know that yet. Well, we know it as people playing the game, but my character doesn't know that he got resurrected. He was a Pataxian spy. Also, welcome, Lauren. I wish there was a being like, do I have to take? How? I'm not going to take any of them. Uh, but we need a envoy. Basically, an envoy is our, our connection to the ruling body of Bravoy. Bravoy is kind of in two, has two alignments, like I said. It has the noble houses, and then it has the, the sword lords. If we go with the sword lords, the sword lords are raising us into the, this position. They're the people that gave us the quest to go and do the thing on the premise of success of taking out the stag lord that we'd become a baron. So they are the ones raising us to the barony. I just don't know. It's like, do we really want to be tightly tied to them? I don't want to go with, I don't think I want to go with the noble houses because that kind of sends that we're against the, the impression that we're against. So for me, it's either the orc or lander. Lander shows that we're, we got, we're open to, a connection to a, robot, a noble house, but we don't know which side. It sounds like he might be the prince. Like right now, 
there's there's a king on a throne somewhere. It sounds like he might be like of the royal family itself, not just a noble. But that's just my suspicion. I have nothing to base it on besides the fact that he's since since youth he's been raised to rule. Right? He's also sn snuck out of his kingdom to He might not be the first in line for the throne, but he seems to me I think he might be a prince. I wish he'd just give us a bit more information to go on. I think I'm gonna go with Young Young Lander, guys. Oh, the heir of House Lebeda. <laughs> Naive enough to think no one would recognize him here. I wouldn't trust him. Who knows what he has in mind? Heir of House Lebeda. House Lebeda is based to the southwest of Lake uh, Rekel and Bravoy, controlling the plains and significant portions of Lake's shipping. They are considered to be the Brevik's noble family that emphasizes Rosalyn having significant tell, a tall than blood, an appreciation for the fine things, and a love of sword fighting. Family motto is success through grace. Hmm. All right, so at least we found out what house he's a part of. Southwest of Lake Wreckville, or uh, Rachel. Trolling the plains and significant portions of the lake's shipping. They are considered to be the Brevik noble family that epitomizes Rosalind. In fact, oh, okay. Rosalind's the country that used to be the, the Sword Lords, right? So that kind of still still links us to the Sword Lords a little bit, but it distances us from Yamandi Aldori a bit, which could have ramifications later on. So last chance. Anybody think we should go with anyone else with those spoilers? I'm still I think I'm still leaning towards him. Yeah, screw it. Let's go with it. Excellent. Stand here. Lords feels like and ladies, today we are here to honor three brave people who have done the impossible. They've tamed the stolen lands. Baron Hannes Drelev, the new master of Glenabon. Captain Mager Varn, the conqueror of Dunsward. And finally, the tamer of the Shrike Hills, who put an end to the atrocities of the Stag Lord's bandits. Step forward. On behalf of the people of the free city of Restov, I confer upon you this noble title. Rise, your grace. I felt like either of the other two would put us too much in the pocket of someone trying to directly control us. Whereas this gives us a bit of a wild card and some chaos maybe, but it doesn't specifically make us part of their agenda, right? They'll still have to deal with us, but it kind of it kind of distances us just a little bit. And if he's their house was still part of the Sword Lords, so it's not uh, directly against. Victory. The Stag Lord's dead, and the capital of the new barony has been built in place of his fort. That was how the long and challenging taming of the Stolen Lands began. <laughs> 